Today, if you type in the domain mortis.com into your search bar, you'll simply be met with an error code, a plain page telling you that you are not able to reach the site. But there was a time when typing in mortis.com had a very different outcome. In the early 2000s, the internet was filled with strange websites, complete with users who documented them. As the infamous Cicada 3301 situation gained popularity in 2012, users were desperate for the next big web mystery, players in search of their next game. But Mortis.com was a little different. Cicada 3301 wanted to be solved. It was an intentional string of complex puzzles that led players from one place to another, rewarding them with the next string of clues as they went along. Mortis.com remains a mystery that does not want to be solved. For reasons that will be discussed in this video, finding concrete information on Mortis.com is challenging. The first fact that we know for sure is that the domain went up in 1997, only being discovered by chance, much, much later in the early 2010s. The oldest post referencing Mortis.com describe a user stumbling onto the domain before sharing their bizarre findings on 4chan. Going to Mortis.com when the site was active brought you to a simple landing page Cutting over a black background was a white box, prompting you for a username and password. Most people at this point would simply turn away, but this particular user decided to snoop around in the source code. The poster looked around to find a hint of what was behind that login screen. They realized that there was something much weirder going on than just the website's strange name and the monochromatic design. The user combed through pages and pages of code, quickly realizing that Mortis.com was hosting an enormous amount of data. Some of the individual files were as large as 39 gigabytes, and the total amount of data being hosted on the website was in the range of terabytes. To give you an idea, 1000 gigabytes is equal to 1 terabyte, and back in the late 90s and early 2000s, this was a massive amount of data to be hosted on a website much more than most individuals would ever need or would even be able to afford. For example, in 1998, Walmart made waves for upgrading their processing server from 7.5 terabytes to 24 terabytes, which would give you an idea of how much a terabyte was worth in the late 90s. Even today, storing that much data on a website is largely impractical for ordinary consumers. The likelihood that a single individual was storing this much information back in 1997 was next to impossible. Dial-up internet was still the norm in most households, and it would be a painfully slow uploading process, even on a faster T1 line like what you would find at universities. Something seemed off here. Something seemed to be hiding within the strange website. The appeal of Mortis.com was twofold. On one hand, the URL conjures images of mortality, with Mortis being the Esperanto word for death. Whoever named the website Mortis.com either had a dark sense of humor or wanted the name to reflect something grotesque, held behind the tomb of a login screen. Maybe they even chose the name as a deterrent to prevent users from using the website, with the unintended consequence of being that the grim name pulled many toward the website instead of pushing them away. On the other hand, regarding its appeal, Mortis.com presented a challenge from the get-go, a cold login screen on a black background. That was it. Nothing more, nothing less. It was like the website was begging to be accessed by an unauthorized user, who was smart enough to crack the code. It was the age of the internet sleuth after all. Still, stranger details about the domain started to collect. Word spread about the difficulty in breaking the login. Average consumer domains weren't prepared to handle brute force attacks from multiple users, where an automated bot tries to match millions of passwords and username combinations to break into a website. Mortis.com resisted these attempts, with none of the dozens of attempts by different users leading any closer to a breakthrough. Of course, the website's defiance only advanced its appeal to amateur internet sleuths. Word about Mortis.com spread to other boards on 4chan, inevitably reaching the paranormal board before appearing on Reddit in multiple amateur hacking forums. Developments in solving the Mortis.com mystery were painfully slow. It wasn't a large influx of information that poured in. It was small bits, only to disappear as they led nowhere useful or were confirmed as hoaxes. This was especially difficult, since as interest in the site grew, more and more fake posts would appear. Users claimed that they had logged in to find everything from music files to hardcore snuff videos, to classified government documents. 
Among these hoaxes, a small spark appeared in the dark, a name, Thomas Ling. Any clear information on Ling was hard to verify, even including his existence. A string of clues led some users to assume that the domain was registered under the name Thomas Ling on the 14th of November, 1997. This also allowed them to validate around 24 other websites under the same name and hosting company. What they found was disturbing. First, there was Cthulhu.net. Users who documented the website claimed it gave off a similar uncanny feeling to Mortis.com. Once again, it was a single landing page, but it didn't prompt for login details. Over a completely black background, only two things appeared, the shape of a white chess piece and a quote, dead but dreaming. The website had no other links and zero evidence that there was anything more to it. Unlike Mortis.com, those acquainted with the work of H.P. Lovecraft will be quick to identify the name of the website. Cthulhu appears frequently in Lovecraft's mythos, a monster associated with the slow descent into insanity of the protagonist. The quote, Dead But Dreaming, is a paraphrased version of a section that appears in both Lovecraft's The Call of Cthulhu and The Shadow Over Innsmouth. In his house at Rilly, dead, Cthulhu waits dreaming. Users began reaching out with what they knew, hoping to find the mysterious Ling. A development came when one user found a Thomas Ling in Sydney, Australia. Further investigation seemed promising, even revealing an address, only for the users to discover that the property was an unowned, empty plot of land. This strange turn in the investigation did little to deter anyone, if anything, it just added to the mystery of Mortis.com. More leads on the Thomas Ling name would lead to empty warehouses in remote regions across the globe. Some more detective work even brought up a phone number or two, but nobody ever answered. And some of the Thomas Lings and associated names found down the rabbit hole ended up being people who had been deceased for years, way before the domain was registered. Users began trying to reach out to the email accounts associated with the server. Blair, Igor, Mortis, Child of Chaos, however, no confirmed evidence exists of any of them ever responding. Users began combing through the information on the other associated websites. One of them was a website that is still up today, for a woman's quilt business. Another was dentalfillins.com, a simple website advertising dental fillings and other dental procedures. Dentalfillins.com pointed to a Thomas Ling working as a dentist in San Francisco. Other strings led to a Thomas Ling working as an attorney or to a security expert working at a high-end firm. And although it seemed like the users were on the tip of finding him and his true identity, they never did. The reality of the matter is even if the users did end up finding the real Thomas Ling through these calls and emails, he seems to not want to talk about Mortis.com with a bunch of strangers from the internet. Out of respect for his privacy, many users dropped trying to contact him altogether, and his identity, even his existence, remains unconfirmed. So then, here's what we do know about the strange website. In 1997, without a doubt, the domain Mortis.com was registered under the name Thomas Ling. Whether this is this person's real name or not, they use the same details to also register 24 other websites under the domain registration network, Pair Networks. The server being located in Philadelphia. 2011, the furthest discussion I can find on the Mortis.com mystery originated on 4chan's slash g slash forms, dedicated to discussing technology. There are posts in this thread that link to older mentions of Mortis.com on other websites and forms, but just like the domain itself, most of these have been wiped from the search engines. 2011 is likely also the year that Mortis.com went down, although it is difficult to determine exactly when thanks to most of the online sources having disappeared. In 2013, after years of intermittent investigation, the Mortis.com mystery is brought up again on 4chan's slash x slash forms, dedicated to the paranormal. It's worth saying that this is important, as although 4chan isn't exactly what you'd call a credible source, it does help that the original series of the discussions were found on slash g slash. The paranormal board can have a distinctly r slash no sleep quality, where serious discussions about the strange is purposely indistinguishable from storytelling. 
Many sources I could find incorrectly cite the original post to come from the slash x slash board and not the slash g slash board, which is worth noting, as by the time the discussion reached the paranormal board, Mortis.com had already been brought down. What we do know is that when Mortis.com went down, it took many of the websites associated with Thomas Ling at the same time. Users logged into 4chan and Reddit to report that Mortis.com seemed unresponsive, only to quickly realize that others, like Cthulhu, were also inaccessible. One user claimed that Thomas Ling did reach out to them sometime before this. He allegedly demanded that the users stop trying to hack his website, and when pushed for an explanation on Mortis.com, claimed that the website was only used to host his wedding photos online, which seems to be unlikely considering the size of the files, but it would be possible. Today, most of the websites are still down. You can still log into the quilting website, but Cthulhu and Mortis.com are of course inaccessible. Someone has personally requested that both those domains be completely wiped from the internet archives. On the Wayback Machine, you will find no evidence of them the only proof that they existed at all being that someone had personally requested for all the records to be wiped. A wiki that existed for a few years to try and document every piece of evidence on the subject is also down, compounding the difficulties in researching Mortis.com after it was brought down. I did some extra research to try and find a conclusion to this story. I had a look through the remaining records on the Mortis.com domain. Even though the website is down, I noticed that it was slated to expire in 2020. Before this could happen though, it was re-registered under the same name, Thomas Ling, once again, under the same domain host. This re-register is valid until 2025. There is no way to be sure if Thomas Ling, who re-registered the domain in 2020, is the same as the original, as many of these hosting websites go by a policy of trust when users give their details. One thing that needs to be mentioned is Mortis.cc, a clone of the monochrome Mortis.com landing page that went up in 2021. Some of the resources I used in researching this video make brief mention of it, but looking around the domain registration records, what I could find was that a user registered the domain in 2020 from the company named Cheap, and has been updating it sporadically throughout this year. It looks exactly like the original Mortis.com, but of course, there are reasons to be skeptical that it's even related at all. If any of you are feeling brave, I'd be curious if you could find any more information and share what you found in the comments. Barely Sociable has an excellent video on this topic where he concludes at the end with the theory that Mortis.com was nothing more than a website for downloading and hosting pirated videos because there was evidence in the original source that it hosted an embedded media player, and some of the file names lined up with movie titles. Mortis.com could have just been something far more innocent than the name implied. This could also explain why many of the websites all went down at the same time. Either the FBI got wind of the piracy and Ling had no choice to remove them, or Ling got spooked by the sudden attention he was receiving from total strangers on the internet. Fearing legal consequences or his personal details being leaked, he pulled the plug on the websites getting the most attention. However, a part of me still finds this explanation weird. If Thomas Ling really wanted to distance himself away from the internet frenzy surrounding Mortis.com, I can't understand why he would keep re-registering the domain as he did in 2020. This is even if it was Thomas Ling who reached out to the hackers. When asked for proof regarding his insistence that he was just storing his wedding photos, he stopped responding. As one person on Reddit mentions, who hosts their wedding photos under the Latin name for death? Still, some of you watching may have realized something unconfirmed in the timeline here. The thing that pushed those users to investigate was the idea of the huge amount of data being hosted on Mortis.com all the way back in 1997. The original post was made around 2011, but the way many people recount the story makes it sound like there was clear evidence that Mortis.com had been hosting files since its registration. This is highly unlikely, and even considering that the site was never indexed on Google and is wiped from the archival records, we can only assume that the domain was registered and unused, only having the files begin to be uploaded much later in the early 2000s. If any of you can find proof contradicting this, that Mortis.com was storing gigabytes of data since the 90s and early 2000s, please let me know. 
Still, despite these more innocent conclusions, it's peculiar that someone continues to register the domain. Perhaps it is because of the value now associated with one-word domains. But in any case, the owner seems keen on keeping it in their possession, as though it might go up again one day. That the firestorm will start all over again, and maybe, just maybe, we might get some answers after all. There seems to be nothing that goes against our nature as much as a mystery left unsolved. When researching Mortis.com, I found myself dancing between two very different perspectives. I treated the post where people claimed that they had broken the login and found vast amounts of everything from classified government documents to snuff videos with skepticism. As barely sociable claims in his video, what's most likely going on here is that this has been one long string of telephone. Users may have fixated on the idea that Mortis.com was hosting terabytes of data in 1997 when this was not confirmed. It is far more likely that Occam's razor is at play here that the simpler explanation is the truth and that the domain was dormant for almost a decade before the increasing affordability of hosting data and improved uploading speeds allowed a Thomas Ling to download and stream videos through the Mortis.com domain. Despite this, something still feels uncomfortable and out of place when it comes to this domain. Why would someone go through such lengths as to wipe the records of the website off the internet? Something still seems very off when it comes to this mystery. If it were possible to go back to the website when it was still online and have the correct login details, I'm not certain what we would find when pulling back the curtains. What do you guys think hides behind the domain of death? Let me know down in the comments or over on my Discord. If you haven't already, check out Barely Sociable's video covering the topic as he does an amazing job and gives great insight onto the mystery. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing or checking out my other videos as it really helps me out. Thanks again and have a good night.